Hi, my name's Alan Smith, and this is the fourth in a series of webcasts covering the development and experimentation of using GPT algorithms to control a high-level strategy of a StarCraft II bot. In this webcast, I'll be using TensorBoard to monitor the statistics of the game and experimenting with prompt engineering to influence the strategy decisions made by the GPT model. So in order to monitor the game, I'm going to be using TensorBoard. And to do this, I'll need to install a couple of Python packages. So I'll bring up a command prompt in the Python virtual environment, and I'll enter pip install TensorBoard. This will install a TensorBoard functionality that includes a web application that allows the TensorBoards to be displayed in the browser. We also need a way of being able to write information to the TensorBoard. Now, typically, when we install TensorFlow or PyTorch, this functionality is provided. However, those two libraries are quite a heavy install. So I'm going to do a pip install of TensorBoard X, which will provide a lightweight framework for being able to log the game data directly to a TensorBoard file, which can then be displayed in the web application. So with those two packages installed, I can go back to Visual Studio. And within the StarCraft bots file, from TensorBoard X, I'm going to import the summary writer. And I'm going to be using time-based logins. So from date time, I'm going to import date time. In the constructor, I'm going to declare the writer variable, and I'll initialize it to none. And then in the onStart method, I'll create a string variable for the directory that we're going to be logging to. So this is going to be logs. I'm going to use an F string for this. And within the logs folder, I'll generate another folder for logging the data. So I'll use date time now to get the current system time. Then I'll format this time using this string. So we'll have the month, the day, the hours, the minutes, and seconds. I also want to include the difficulty of the opponent in the path file. And this will allow us to test the results with different levels. So here I can use self.gameinfo.players. Player one will be the opponent. And then I can select dot difficulty dot name. And because I'm using an F string and I've used single quotes for the string, I'll change the single quotes in the formatting to double quotes. So with the logs dir defined, I can initialize the summary writer with a new summary writer object and specify that newly created logs directory. So I'll define a new method for logging these statistics. Because the method is part of the class, I specify self in the parameters. So when I'm logging the game statistics, I'm going to use the number of seconds that we're into the game for these statistics. And this will give me consistency between the different game logs. We do have an iteration property. However, this can vary based on whether we're running on real time or not. Because if we're running in real time, we can miss 20 or 30 seconds of game time while a GPT model is thinking. So I'm setting the step to be an integer value of self.time, and self.time is the time in seconds that we are into the game. So now we can start to log the game metrics. So I'll do self.writer.addScaler, and we can see GitHub Copilot is giving us an autocompletion on that. I would like the different statistics to be divided into different sections. So instead of just minerals, I'm going to specify resources slash minerals. And I can copy paste this line. And as well as tracking the minerals, we want to track the rate at which we're gathering minerals. So to get that information, I use self.state.observation.score.collectionRateMinerals. And with each of these, I'm also specifying the step, which is the seconds into the game, as the other parameter. So the GitHub Copilot suggestion is that we're going to track Vespane gas as well. We will do this later on, but at the moment, I haven't implemented the code to gather Vespane gas. So another statistic that we can track is the size of the army. And I'll specify this as units to army, and I'll take self to army count as the value. We can also track the number of workers. And to do this, I'll get the length of the self.workers array. We don't have a workers count property. So next, we can track details on the supply. So I can look at the supply used. We've got the supply used property there. And then I can copy paste this to track the supply cap and the supply left. 
We also want to track the score statistics of the game. So in the score section, I'll track the overall score. We can also track the killed value units and the killed value structures. And this will show us the value of the enemy units and structures that our units have destroyed. So I'll just modify the supply statistics. This isn't going to be the length of these values. I'll just be tracking the values themselves of supply used, supply cap, and supply left. So I'll navigate to the onStep method. And this is going to be executed on every iteration in the game. And just like distributing the workers, we don't need to log the statistics every iteration. So if the iteration is divisible by 10, then we're going to log the statistics. So it will log the statistics every 10 iterations. So let's test this implementation and see if we can see those statistics in TensorBoard. We can see that a logs folder has been created. Within that logs folder, I've got the current date and time, and we can see that this is running on the easy difficulty. In the Python project, I'm going to open a new console, and I'll type TensorBoard. And we can see here that I can specify the logs dir, which is going to be the folder where the logs are located. So if I specify that as logs, we can see TensorBoard is starting up. I haven't got TensorFlow installed, so this is running with a reduced feature set. But it's giving me the URL that will allow me to view those details in the browser. So I can browse to that URL, and by default it's showing the time series data. I'll switch to the scalars view, and here we can see the graphs for the different statistics in the game. We're already gathering minerals. We can see the rate of minerals we're gathering. I'll set the smoothing value down to zero so we can see the actual data. If I scroll down, we can see that we haven't killed any units or structures, but the score does seem to be increasing nicely. And I can expand the units. And here we can see the number of army units and workers that we've created. So our units have already gone in to attack the enemy base. And by default, these graphs will auto-update every 30 seconds. So we can see that we've killed quite a few units. And if I refresh the graph and scroll down, we can see that we've also destroyed quite a few structures. And we can also see statistics for the supply and for the number of units that we've got. When I'm working with TensorBoard, I usually generate a batch file so I can run it quickly without typing in the logs directory. So in the console, I'll copy the command to run TensorBoard from that logs directory, go to my Python project, create a text file and name it tb.bat, and then paste in the command to run TensorBoard. And I'll save that file. Going back to the console, I can now just type tb, and it will run TensorBoard with the appropriate log directory. So in this webcast, I'm going to be experimenting with using different prompts and changing the text within the prompts. And I've got this method in prompt utils that's going to load the prompt text file. I'd also like the option to be able to comment out lines in the prompt. So I can experiment with different values and the commented out lines won't be sent to the language model. So instead of reading in the entire file, I'll read the individual lines of the file into an array of strings. I can then create a blank prompt and then iterate through the lines. And again, GitHub Copilot is helping me. And if the line does not start with a hash character, then we'll add that line to the prompt. And that means I can use Python style commenting to comment out lines in the prompt. So what I'd like to focus on with the prompt engineering and the monitoring, is how GPT can create a strategy for building structures and units. So in the prompt, I'm going to comment out all of the text related to the high-level strategy and attacking the enemy base. And that means the strategy will only be focused on defending the base. Back in the bot, I'm going to add a run name member variable, which is a string. And in the start method, if the length of this string is greater than zero, I'll add the run name to the logs directory. And that means the run name will be visible in TensorBoard. In the play Protoss GPT bot file, after I've created the bot, I'll set the run name to no attack. 
and I'll set the computer difficulty to very easy, which means there hopefully won't be much chance of the computer AI attacking the base, and if it does, it hopefully won't have very good units. OK, so let's start the game and examine the results in TensorBoard. So here we can see in the response from GPT that it's not putting line breaks in the build order. And that's an undesired side effect of me modifying the prompt to remove the attacking strategy. So I'll go back to the prompt and I'll specify clearly that each option must be specified by a line break when it's creating the build options. I'll also go into the logs file and delete the logs data from that previous run. OK, let's try this again. So now we can see that the build order is working. We've created a number of pylons and a couple of gateways. And we've already created a second nexus to gather more resources. And six minutes into the game, we've got a lot of units and quite a few structures. If you look at the supply statistics at the top right of the screen, we can see that the supply used is a lot less than the supply cap. And looking in TensorBoard, we can see that the supply left is round about 80. And this means that GPT is creating a lot more pylons in the build order than we actually need. And we can see in the latest build order that it's building as many pylons as we're building zealots. And we already have the supply cap at 200, which is the maximum, so there's no point in building more pylons. So let's see if we can improve things by modifying the prompt. So in the prompt, I'll say, pay close attention to the supply left. This tells you how much supply you have left to build units. If the supply left is 20 or lower, you should build more pylons. If the supply left is over 20, you must not build more pylons. And I've specified must not in uppercase. Sometimes this can help to clarify things in the prompt. If you received an email from your boss and it said you must not do something and must not was in capital case, you'd understand that it's pretty important not to do that. And hopefully the language model will interpret this the same way. So I'll change the bot run name to supply limit prompt. And let's run this again. So what we're interested in in TensorBoard is examining the values for supply left as we progress through the game. We don't want supply left to be zero all the time because that means we can't create units but we also don't want the value to rise too high. And here we can see, five minutes into the game, that in this run, which is the red trace, the supply left value is much lower. Later on, we can see that the supply left has reached a value of 60, but then it's decreasing again. And it's nowhere near as high as it was in the previous run, when I wasn't telling the model to limit the supply in the prompt. So that modification in the prompt was fairly successful. Let's try something different. I'll add the line in the prompt. You must focus on accumulating the maximum amount of resources possible and build minimal offensive units. And I'll set the run name to max resources. So what we're interested in here is looking at the number of army units and supply units and also looking at the resource statistics. And here we can see we're not creating as many army units as we did in previous games and the number of workers is much higher. And looking at the resources statistics, we can see that we've gathered a lot more minerals, and also the mineral gathering rate is much higher than it was in previous runs. And if we let the game progress, we can see that it is creating some offensive forces, and 13 minutes into the game, we can see that it's gathered far more resources than it did in the previous games. So I'll comment out the line of the prompt about accumulating resources. And instead of that, we'll say, you must focus on building the maximum number of offensive units possible whilst minimizing on building probes. I'll change the run name to max offensive and we'll test the new prompt. And in TensorBoard, I've disabled the traces of the earlier run so we can compare the max offensive statistics with the max resources statistics. And what we're interested in here is the number of army units and the number of workers that are created compared with the previous run. So four minutes into the game, we can already see that more army units are being created 
and less work as are being created. And with the next update, we can see that this trend is continuing. We've got a fairly even increase in the number of army units. However, by the time we get nine minutes into the game, we can see that although we're focusing on army units, we've actually got slightly less offensive units than we had in the previous run, when we were focusing on maximizing resources. But now, 10 minutes into the game, we can see that we have created more army units here. And now 14 minutes into the game, we can see that we've got quite a big army. However, in this scenario, we can see that the strategy was so focused on the army that the language model never recommended creating an additional nexus to gather more resources. And we can see here that all of the resources have been consumed and the probes are completely idle. So let's use a bit of prompt engineering to see if we can improve this. So I'll comment out this line and paste it again. But I'll remove the section of the prompt that says whilst minimizing on building probes. So now it just says you must focus on building the maximum number of offensive units possible. I'll change the run name to max offensive no probes limit. And we'll test this new prompt. And we can see that about six minutes into the game, the number of army units is the same as it was in the previous game. However, the number of workers is higher. And we can see on the map that GPT-4 has decided to extend to another base and generate more workers. So hopefully it's going to generate a sufficient number of workers to be able to maximize on the army size. So about 10 minutes into the game, we can see that the number of workers has leveled off, whereas the number of offensive units is very similar to what it was in the previous run. We do have some units attacking our base, but hopefully this won't affect the results too much. And one of the problems of only having zealots as the offensive units is they're not able to attack the airborne units of the Zerg. We'll fix that in future webcasts by adding more offensive units to the build order. So 13 minutes into the game, we can see that the number of army units has leveled off. This may be due to the attacks from the Zerg opponent. However, by the time we get 17 minutes into the game, we can see that we have quite a few more army units. And we can see that the supply used has reached 200. So right now it's not possible to train any more units. And if you look at the updated graphs at the end of the game, you can see that with this new prompt, we were able to maximize the number of army units compared with the previous runs. So now we've got monitoring implemented and a way of being able to test and modify the prompt. However, at the moment, the GPT powered bot is only able to train probes and zealots. In order to develop more advanced strategies, we're going to need some more advanced units. And that's what I'll be looking at in the next webcast.